Uh, Patricia, thank you very much for your yeah, time. I really do appreciate you. this. Um, you, best known for your role in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Before I talk about that, all the, all the stuff you've probably answered a million times, you grew up, you were born and you grew up in, in Belfast. I did. I'm from Northern Ireland. Oh, there's the accent. Yes, I'm wondering where I it went. Put on, but I got on the water at the age of 17 and someone said, and that was the last time you were ever on it. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, I didn't really talk like that. I talked like this. <laughs> well, I was going to say, Northern Ireland, uh, fairly heavy uh, influences in, in religion, quite um, conservative. But your career path has been less than conservative as far as the roles you've taken on. Really? <laughs> well, do, do I need to read some of your, uh, your film history? Okay. Uh, what have I got here? Have uh, I got my clothes on? It, well, I, I'll, I'll ask that question. Okay. 1971, it's the Chastity Belt. It's my for art. the art. Yeah. Yeah, okay, because in the lead up to. Oh, the Chastity Belt? Yeah, You're not and. Going back to that. I'm taking that was you way back. Frankie Howard. Yes, Can you, do you want to explain your role in the Chastity Belt? Oh yeah, they were going to the wars, and my husband was buying a chastity belt for me. Which you... <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot that. Yeah. I'm a wench. A wench, yeah. <laughs> by your own admission. Yes. And, and Fraggy Hard was selling them. And he says, oh, oh madam, oh, get your chastity belts here, oh, madam. <laughs> Fraggy Hard, you know who I mean. He's a wonderful comedian. Since... No longer here. Mm. But anyway, so, and he was awful. He really upstaged one. I mean, it's only a little wench girl with a bonnet. And my husband said, oh, I'd like that for my wife. And I said, oh, I like that one. So they got me this chastity belt. I don't know if you've ever seen one. I haven't seen them before. I have. I have uh, not, <laughs> <laughs> not recently. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so the joke of the thing was, so he sold the chastity belt. And then, and then he said to everyone, when they, we'd all bought them and their husbands had gone to the war and got us in their chastity belts, um, he, Frankie Hard said, Get your keys here! Keys here! That was a joke. I know, yeah. I so get up the front with. Um, yes. the, who was that with? Matahari, Jaja Gabor. She played Matahari and I played the French maid. And so I did a lot of up the yeah. series. And uh, 1972, it was a mo I, th I think it was a movie, um, Rent a Dick. That's Rent a Detective. Oh, well, okay, yes. <laughs> Sorry, it was. <laughs> okay. And I pre played Donald Sinden's chauffeurs. And, um, no, it is. It was. It was a detective. Oh, Actually, yeah. Spike Milligan yeah. was in that film. Because I saw an exit of it recently. I didn't realise he was at the time. Because, anyway, I played this chauffeurs. And I told um, the um, company that I could drive, so I was going to drive a Rolls Royce, but I couldn't. I didn't have a driving license, <laughs> but my agent said, I'm a bit worried about this, Pat. I said, I'm taking driving lessons, honestly, but I didn't succeed. I didn't get, and he said, I'm sorry, but I've got to tell them, you can't drive. So they were told, and they said, oh, and John Wells was working on it and on the script, and he said, all oh, right, we'll change that. Well, so I open the, I'm dressed as the chauffeurs in the uh, cap and the buttons and the boots and the da-da-da. And I open the door and Donald Sinden gets into the driving seat. He's my boss. And I get into the passenger seat and I sit there and I say, where to, sir? And he says, oh, Macclesfield, and drives off, you know. And um, so it's turned into a joke because I'm actually his mistress. So I end up with him somewhere. So I never drove the Rolls Royce. <laughs> but rent a dick was well, rent a detective. Okay, all right. The Are you going to mention John Cleese now? Uh, is there something you need to yeah, mention about John Cleese? Yeah, because no, <laughs> you've rattled off an impressive number of names that you've worked with, even before that that massive break into uh, Rocky Horror. Oh, I was around before then. <laughs> but, I mean, I've done quite a lot before that. Yes, well, uh, that's that's kind of what I'm yeah. getting to is that you you'd more than proven yourself, mm. but this the Rocky Horror is the role that you are most remembered well, for. Well, that's because it's the biggest cult movie in the world. Could I say that? I think I can say that. Quite it's safely. Cult classic. So logically, I'd be known, you know. But I did at the time. I did, um, you know. I went to, into Rocky Horror. I did at the theatre upstairs in 1973. 
the uh, Theatre Upstairs Royal Court Theatre, 60 seat theatre, and there was this little musical going on. And um, I said to my agent, what is it? What is this? And he said, I don't know, but you need to sing a Paul Anker song. You won't remember Paul Anker. Um, oh, you'd be surprised. Uh, you're right. And uh, a rock and roll song. I said, I don't sing rock and roll song. He said, oh, well, that's what you have to do. And uh, I said, what is it? And he said, I think it's something about a circus. And I thought, oh. But it kind of was, wasn't it, in a way? Like, I mean, he didn't know what it was. So I went along, met Jim Sharman, the Australian director, um, Brian Thompson, the Australian set designer, and then Little Nell, Australian. So a lot of Australians to do with that. And O'Brien, who wrote it, from New Zealand. So, um, but he was born in Cheltenham, but they grew up in New Zealand, to which he's just returned, actually. I um, went to a party of his the other night. He's just built himself a house there, and he's gone home. Anyway, I do, is this it over there? No, it's over there. Oh, sorry. It, it's, it's, it's the unofficial sort of extra state of Australia. We, we've adopted them. Oh, I, I, yeah. saw, I saw a film of his house. It was on YouTube. It's gorgeous. And then the guy said, it's by the sea and it's very lovely. All white sofas, no one's white. And then it, and it's, uh, he's built a gatehouse. As well as, what? I said, I believe you've built a gatehouse. He said, well, that's for anyone who wants to come and stay. So where is it? Because I'm going. <laughs> I can move into his gatehouse. Don't you think? Well, I, I so can't I'm see any problems with it. I mean, well, wait, wait. Upstairs you, you, at the Royal Court. Yes, well, yes. <laughs> okay. And, um, you, so you wander off wherever you want to okay. go. You've got a rich... Lo you've led a rich life, and I'm sure there are a lot of lessons we can learn from what you've yeah, experienced. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, we, we did the play, and that was meant to be for three weeks. And... Um, I'd had enough of it by then, you know. After I, three weeks? Yeah. You'd had enough of Rocky Horror? Yeah, I had. Because <laughs> I'd done it, you know. I mean, I had. To, I was going on to play Christopher Pankhurst for the BBC and get votes for women, you know, and I had Lady Macbeth to do. I had a lot of stuff to do, you know. I wasn't destined to do this. And they said, well, this is really, um, you know, because Mick Jagger was queuing up on the last night of the three weeks with Bianca in her white suit and cane and Elliot Gould and they were standing by the bar downstairs because nowhere else for them to stand and I ran upstairs and said oh my god Mick Jagger's in you know it was like that I mean they couldn't keep you you know the word of mouth in that three weeks was unbelievable so they said you know would you stay on I said I can't afford to stay on you know we were paid 18 quid a week which I handed over to my nanny and you know and they said, well, just another two weeks. I said, no. Um, anyway, I did stay on another two weeks. It moved on. We kept, kept turning cinemas into theatres. It was quite extraordinary, that. The Chelsea Classic, and we turned the Asaldo Cinema. We kept turning cinemas into theatres. They kept thinking Rocky Horror had to be contained and to be small, which uh, they were wrong about that, by the way. But anyway, and it was a very long journey, Rocky Horror. Anyway, I got out after... I was the first to go, I think, yeah, and I went to Halifax, covered in glitter. We wore a lot of glitter in that show, and glitter then wasn't like um, the sort of rub-on stuff. It was really prickly and quite hurt at the time. Glass, you know, so we were covered, so one slept in glitter, and thought, ugh, uh, you know. Anyway, so, um, and Raina Burton, who was playing Rocky, unfortunately got glitter in an inconvenient place. He was in the shard dousing himself on the last night when Mick Jagger was in. And um, I heard someone going, oh, oh, in the shower. And I said, who's that? He said, it's Raina, Pat. I said, what's wrong with you? He said, I've got glitter under my foreskin and it's all, and I can't move. I said, oh, God. And I was getting, um, you know, putting on my fishnets and my suspenders and my ice cream girl outfit because I was going to sing um, science fiction with an ice cream trip and uh, that's why I changed down in the showers because I was a little demure and <laughs> so, so Rayner was and, and he, he said I can't move Pat I can't walk he's the muscle man you know I thought oh okay I thought oh god we don't have to do the show maybe and little Nell said um, 
I'll play Rocky. Sorry, that's meant to be Australian, but it's not. It's, it's a very bad, but all right. Sorry, <laughs> Do you want to give another crack? Yeah. I'll play, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Anyway, so Nelly said she'd play Rocky, and I thought, ugh, because I wanted to go home. And <laughs> so, um, well, she didn't. They went, Jim so the show, the show went on? No, the show didn't go on. No, but the show did. Jim Curry was fit to be tied, because Jagger was in, and Elliot, and Bianca. No show. Is it no show? So, we okay, went so home. you went home. But we went so home. And you, missed it. So you did eventually leave the production. I did. But and you were you and were And then I, I was brought back. Then two years later, they um, to make the film. So 20th Century Fox and Lou Adler and everyone to make the film. And um, so I met them for lunch at the Ark Restaurant in Kensington to discuss making the film. And I said, you know, I'd be singing like science fiction, my song. The Usherette song and um, playing Magenta. And Jim Shaman said, No, we can't have an Usherette because, in the thing of film, that won't work as a character. And um, I said, Well, am I not doing that song? And he said, No. I said, Then I'm not doing your film. So he said, Oh, well, <laughs> what? You know, so he. Um, Sorry, what are they doing out there? Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, that we'll shut that door. Shut that door. Sorry. Sorry. That's right. Um, so Shaman said, um, so I said I wasn't doing the film, and he said, oh, no, no, let's go around to John Goldson's house and look at the sets and look at everything. So I went around to look at the sets, and suddenly this st stage show was opened out into a pink laboratory, Transylvanian, motorbikes, da-da-da, costumes. I said, oh! I said, I'll do it. That's fantastic. Yes, let's do it. So you lost your, your opening song, but you I did and I didn't. Uh, yeah. Because on... Um, well, I did, because I thought they got Shirley Bassey in to sing it or something. You know, yeah. maybe I didn't sing well enough. But um, we were driving down to Bray Studios, Richard O'Brien, Tim Curry and myself, and um, Tim said, by the way, Richard, who is singing science fiction? And Richard said, I am. I said, what? I said, how are you? <coughs> how could you sing my song? He said, well, you know. But, and, but you lost your signature song, but... You, but, but, but they are so on the, the yes in the so promotional yes, stuff so they they are your lips aren't they yeah so on the last uh, day of filming it was a wrap complete over go home everyone exhausted we've done it and Jim Shaman said to me um, you know you know Pat have you ever seen the Man Ray lips the painting of the lips in the sky and the mouth is disembodied mug. I said, no, I've never seen that. I haven't. And uh, he said, well, I have this idea. We could use your mouth uh, to sing science fiction. And I said, you know, my mouth and his voice, how much, <laughs> you know?